It's Div Wilson, right? Will our oceans survive? Are we doomed? I mean, the oceans are the principal source of oxygen for this planet. Stiv Wilson is with us. He's with the five, is it pronounced gyres, Stiv? Um, depends on where you or are. Gyres. Gyre or gyre will work. Which is which is English and which is uh, American? Um, American is uh, gyre, for sure. Gyre, okay. G-Y-R-E-S, five, the digit five, G-Y-R-E-S dot org is the website. So what are the five gyres? Basically, there's five major subtropical oceanic gyres in the world, um, North South Pacific, North South Atlantic, and Indian Ocean. And these are called gyres because they rotate? Well, yes, exactly. Currents? Basically, you have two opposing trade winds um, that, mm -hmm. that form these things. And because of the Earth's Coriolis effect, those, those wind patterns bend. Right. And so you create a, a swirling vortex. The Coriolis being the result of the spinning of the Earth, the, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. So uh, to get right to it, everybody has heard or many people have heard about the this giant garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean off the, I guess, off the Pacific Northwest, or if you were to draw a straight line from the Pacific Northwest to, to central China or North China or something like that. But, but most people don't realize that there are multiple floating garbage patches. Exactly. That's sort of, uh, that is the, uh, um, the mission of the Five Gyres Project is to uh, take expeditions to all major gyres to document plastic pollution. Um, and we've been to three of them so far, North Pacific, Atlant North Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean. And what have you found? Uh, plastic and lots of it. Um, we did 37 trawls on the expedition I was. Um, a trawl is basically the way we collect our data. Right. Um, uh, over about 3,000 miles uh, between U.S. Virgin Islands, Bermuda, and the Azores. Mm -hmm. And every time positive for plastic fragments. And then you come across what are, are called garbage patches, but there's a lot of mythology around what a garbage patch actually is. Okay. Um, so, so uh, we're talking with Steve Wilson with the Five Gyres Gyres Project, five digit five G Y R E S dot org is their website. Um, what is the mythology about the garbage patches, and what is the reality, Steve? Well, the media is really uh, keen on using the uh, state of Texas to describe um, the size and what these look like, and I think you know ultimately. You mean I they're they're as big as the state of Texas? Yeah, I yeah. mean, but they move. They're they're diffuse uh -huh. and and. The, the, the garbage contained within them um, swirls and circulates, um, not only because of the effects of the gyre, but also uh, weather and wind patterns. And So um, are they more like, an, an, a, we would imagine, an amoeba or, so, or even more like, I guess in some ways, this oil slick, you know, with tentacles and arms that go out as a result of the currents? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of, it kind of behaves like lava in a lava, uh, lava lamp. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, very interesting. Interesting metaphor. So... Uh, how dangerous are these things? How long has it taken to get them where they are, and what's it going to take to get rid of them? Um, I think it's uh, you know that's a, that's a difficult question to answer as far as the solution is concerned. Um, for one, they're uh, they're extremely diffuse and they're they're hard to find. They're not like an island where you can go tie a boat up to. And right. there's a lot of funding coming from the you know American Chemistry Council right now to sort of sort of say that we can recycle our way out of this or we can go take tankers out there and clean it up. Well, that would be like sifting the Sahara Desert 100,000 times over. It's it's just not possible. I mean, and it's, it's you know, frankly, it's a fool's errand, if, mm -hmm. uh, if you ask me. I've been there, I've seen it, and it's it's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Isn't and there a isn't there a natural process that will decompose this? Although it it you know many of these plastics will take thousands of years rather than dozens. Yeah, I mean it, over time. I mean we've looked at five hundred thousand years to a thousand years, and nobody really knows. But the rate at which it's entering the ocean is mm -hmm. much faster than any rate that it's going to naturally uh, decompose. And what's it? Uh, now I know that you know ships at sea have been notorious for throwing their garbage overboard for years and years, and it's a practice that has been uh, legally stopped, but practically probably not at all, ex except probably with uh, cruise ships. 
what are the primary sources of all this plastic and and waste that are that are forming and that are getting caught by these five gyres, these these, these giant giant swirling masses of of garbage in the ocean? Um, the number one culprit, I would say, is litter. Um, you mean like on on the highway? Yeah, on the highway. If you see a bottle cap in the street next to your sewer grate. Um, you know, on the West Coast, it's going to end up in the North Pacific Gyre eventually, the next time it rains. Um, wow. And when you talk about... And in apocalypse... Chicago, it'll end up in the Mississippi and ultimately in the in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, and then into the Atlantic. Right. Um, and ultimately, you know, you're, you're looking at a population of 7 billion people worldwide who are addicted to single-use plastics. And, you know, they're using something once that is meant to last forever. And... You know, best estimates we have right now is 3% of plastics worldwide are recycled. So, wow. you know, 97% of this stuff is either going into a landfill or, or going into an ocean. We're talking to Stiv Wilson, five, the Five Gyres Project, 5GYRES.org. Stiv, we have just a minute left. Um, I, I have seen, I mean, we're starting to get like plastic peanuts made from rice. I, I understand that there are plastic bottles and containers made from, from corn plastic that will degrade over a period of years rather than decades or centuries. Is that the solution or is a ban on plastics? I mean, what, what, is, there a, is there a relatively straightforward so, sh- small number of steps that we can take to solve this or is this just out of, totally out of control? I think it's pretty out of control right now. I mean, the rate that we're using it um, is huge. I mean, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere on your grocery store shelf, and it's everywhere in your cabinet. And there is some promise with some biodegradable technologies um, coming online. Plasma incineration, which is burning um, plastic or any matter, for that matter, at such a high heat that um, it's reducing um, um, the everything to its elemental inert form. Right. Um, but and that's that has very, some promise. That, but, yeah, but that's very energy intensive too. Um, yeah, it so, is. Energy so then, you, then you're burning hydrocarbons to generate the. But it's a tough one. Okay, Stiv Wilson. You can actually read all about it, including the solutions, over at five the digit five g y r e s dot org. Stiv, thanks for dropping by. Yeah, thanks, Tom, for having me. Great to have you. Here.